talk about tires. Hey guys, my name is James. And I'm Ashley. We sold our house and we are traveling across the country with our kids. My name is Goose and this is Maverick. Come join us. Hear that? We are once again on the side of the road, on a highway, with a flat tire, or a soon to be flat tire. And if you are RVing, I'm gonna talk super loud. If you are RVing and you plan on doing a lot of driving, I, I'm shaking a little bit, I'm not gonna lie, so the camera might be shaking. Um, I highly suggest getting these PSI um, indicator whatever things. Keeps going off though. That is why we pulled over in time to change our flat on our RV before it went flat and before we had a really, really big scary problem. So thank you Jesus for keeping us safe. Please continue to keep us safe as we sit on the side of the road. We didn't have a place to pull over in time. So <sighs> So let's go see what James is doing. So first off, before we even touch on the topic of tires, there's one very important thing you need to know before you can do any research or make any decisions. What you're towing and how much it weighs. There's actually a few different ways you can do this. There are cat scales all over the place at different truck stops and whatnot that are specifically designed for this purpose. So you can weigh your rig and figure out exactly what your tongue weight is, trailer weight, etc., etc or you can go the more frugal way, which is what we've done, and you can go to a way station. Now, here's the caveat. Do not go to a way station when they are fully operational and there's a line of trucks. You'll get crap for that. But if you can find a way station that is closed, the scales are usually open after hours, so you can pull in there with no line and figure out what your trailer weight is, your truck weight, and even your tongue weight, all that good stuff. And that will give you the information you need to decide what kind of tires you need for your trailer. I got the jack up under here before it got completely flat. Unfortunately, I can't see any puncture holes or nothing like is exploded out. It wasn't like a catastrophic failure. I'm guessing we got like a nail or something somewhere in there. So could have been worse, but we were so close to making it to the campground. We had 20 minutes to go. I don't think we had a smooth travel day in the longest time. Maybe one, like in the past three weeks. Stay in positive. <laughs> First off, let's jump in and look at some of the basics. We actually did a truck tire video a week or so ago, uh, talking about a lot of this similar information. This video will focus mainly on trailer tires. So let's dive in and look here. If you know nothing about tires, this could look like hieroglyphics to you. You have no idea what all this means. So here is a graph that I found from Les Schwab that does the best job at breaking it down. The main ones to look at are gonna be tire type, load index, and speed rating. Those are gonna be your three most important ones when deciding tires for towing. The other ones are definitely good to know, and I'm gonna link up an article down below you can check out if you wanna familiarize yourself with what those are, but we're gonna focus mainly on those three. So first off, let's talk about probably one of the hottest topics I've seen online when I was doing my research for this, and that is tire type. You have P for passenger, LT for light truck, and ST for specialized towing or special towing. And then if there is no letter indicating, you probably are dealing with the metric system, which is more of a European thing, so we're not gonna really worry about that. For towing though, there are two main popular choices, and that is LT and ST. The ST are specific trailer tires. They're designed for nothing but trailers, but you'll hear a lot of people dissing on those. There are quite a few reasons why trailer tires get such a bad rep, and I think one of the main ones is trailers are sold with some of the cheapest tires the manufacturers can buy, and a lot of these come from imports, whether it be from China or whatever, and they're just not manufactured that well. So that's part of the reason why, but the other part of the reason why is people do not follow the guidelines because they don't know what the, the hieroglyphics on their tires mean. They don't know what their speed rating is, so they're going too fast. They don't know what their load index is, so they're putting too much weight on these tires which aren't designed for it. So if you're towing too much and you are going too fast with cheap tires, you're gonna have an issue. 
And that actually brings me to my next topic, the load index. And before I tell you whether I think LT or ST is better for towing, let's go on to this and get all the information. So load index specifically tells you how much weight your tire is rated to carry, whether it be in the dually format or in the single axle format. So if you zoom in here and you can look, you can see this tire has a 127 by 122 load index with a load range of F. Now those are two separate things. The uh, B, C, D, E, F range is a more simplified, easy way to decide how good your tire is. If you wanna get into more details, that's where the load index comes from. And you can see this one's uh, load index is 127 slash 122. Now those two different numbers are depending on what format you have it set up as. If you look below it, it says, uh, depending on whether you're in the dually or the uh, single wheel setup, there are different weight ratings. So this tire actually tells you right on the tire in a single tire format, you can have 3,860 pounds. But if that was not on the tire or you wanna double check it to make sure it's correct, you can use the load index chart, uh, which I will, again will be linked down that blog below, or you can see it on screen right now. 127 is 3,858 which you can see they rounded up to 3,860 because I don't think two pounds will make that big of a difference. Now that's in the single format. If you look at the dually format, that actually reduces the uh, carrying capacity of each tire down to 122. So if we check it out, 122, 3,307. And on the tire, they rounded it to 3,300 because it's seven pounds, not that big of a difference. So that's the load index right there. And that is the best way for you to figure out what your trailer tires are able to carry and know down to the poundage of what it can be versus the load range, the uh, B, C, D, E, F. It's a good loose guideline, but it doesn't give you the exact details you need to know. <laughs> The next little thing we wanna look at on the tires is actually something that I didn't find until later on in my research, and that is the date and age of the tires. There's a much debate on how long tires should last, but the safe bet is anywhere from three to five years. Some people say up to seven, and like that three is a very low age range, but three to five years is pretty good safe bet for the age of your tires. Now to find out how old your tires are, all US manufactured tires are required to have a stamp telling you the week of the year and the year specifically it was created in. So if we zoom in here, we see 3317. That means it was manufactured on the 33rd week of the year 2017. So even by looking at the year, I know that I am more than sufficient as far as this tire goes. Don't have to worry about this um, delaminating or falling apart from the inside because it's so old. But I have heard horror stories of different dealerships or uh, tire sales places trying to shove off older tires on people that might've been sitting on the rack for years and they're trying to get rid of it. So that is something if you are worried about uh, to double check that either before or once they're installed on your rig. All right guys, we are pumping up the spare tire. It did have some pressure in it, but I'm trying to get it up closer to 75, 80, which is what we like to run our tires at. And it was all the way down at like 60, so I'm just trying to get it up a little bit. Thankfully, we do have this pump with us, so I am glad we have the tools we need to get this done. Because if we didn't have the pump, if we didn't have the spare tire or the jack, we'd be kind of screwed. The next and probably one of the most important things to look at on your tires is the speed rating, which is gonna be the last letter here. And if we look into this tire, it is a speed rating of L. Now that's fairly unusual because what I've seen on a lot of trailer tires and online, most trailer tires have a speed rating of 65 miles an hour whereas an L is a speed rating of 75 miles an hour. That's the benefit of these load range F tires that we got from uh, Tomax, which are a, a higher weight rating or higher load index, as well as that higher speed rating. So I find myself towing at 70 miles an hour quite often. And with those other trailer tires where they're only rated for 65, 
uh, that's a recipe for disaster. Not to mention, I'm probably maxing them out at their load index. So in doing the research and figuring out what kind of tires I wanted, uh, I can get the tires that allow me to tow at the speed I tow, as well as have the amount of weight I have in our trailer because we're full time. So we put quite a bit of stuff in the trailer. On a separate topic, you should never overload your uh, gross vehicle weight or your, uh, your load capacity of your trailer. That's a completely separate video. But by knowing how much weight we have in the trailer, like I said at the beginning of this video, I can figure out what kind of tire I need. So that does it for the overview of when you're looking to purchase or upgrade your tires. But before you click away, let's talk about the maintenance you can do to make sure your tires that you just bought last you as long as possible. And there's an airplane. <laughs> Maybe a helicopter. So first off, I'm sure you've heard a lot of different people talk about this, but a tire pressure monitoring system is not required, but I personally have found it amazing. As you guys saw, it has saved our butt more than once as far as letting us know when a catastrophic event might occur, but also, hey, the temperature outside has gone from the 90s to now we're in the 70s, you need to put some more air in your tires, or vice versa. It's getting hot out, you should probably let a little bit of air out before you have too much air in your tires and you have a blowout that way, because both too little and too much air in your tires can cause problems. So in my opinion, the tire pressure monitoring system not only uh, helps you when you're on the road traveling, but instead of having to go around and check all four of your tires with a little uh, tire pressure gauge, which you should have, uh, I'll link down below the one we have, this allows me to immediately start up the truck and it tells me what my tires are right away and I don't have to worry about it, I've got peace of mind. So it's more of a peace of mind and ease of use. If you only travel every once in a while, it might not be a big deal for you to go around and check all of your tires on your trailer, but this way I don't have to go out and manually check every single one. So while we're on the topic of tire pressure, there's debate on what you should run your tires at. Some of the tire manufacturers have charts and graphs that tell you if your vehicle weighs this much or there's this much on this tire, have it to this uh, PSI, which you can do if you really wanna do that, but a good rule of thumb is is run your tires roughly at the cold max psi so if we look in here on this trailer tire that we got it says 100 psi max cold that says that when your tire is just sitting there at room air temperature it should be at about 100 psi so if you run anywhere from 95 to 100 you'll probably be good if you start getting down into the 80s like 20 psi low you run the risk of the sidewalls bending too much building up heat and that's what can cause tire blowouts is not running your tires at the proper psi so again that's where the monitor comes into play. As we mentioned earlier, another thing you can do to help avoid blowouts or uh, extra wear and tear is not overloading your tires. So if you are gonna be running your trailer at its max weight capacity, make sure your tires can handle it because that again is what causes blowouts, is carrying too much weight and going too fast. So just make sure you follow those guidelines. And lastly, one thing you can do to help prevent your tires from wearing out over time is if you are gonna store it for an extended period of time, maybe over the winter or something, or especially in the summer, get a tire cover that you've seen probably draped over RV tires. If it's only gonna be for a few days at the actual campsites, I personally don't think it's too big of a deal, but if you're gonna be storing it for a month or so, you might wanna consider investing in a tire cover to drape over it and just help prevent those sidewalls from drying out. <laughs> okay guys, hopefully this video gave you a good overview of what you should be looking at for your trailer tires. Um, I tried to find a balance of our experience and what we did and kind of giving you the technical information to help you make the correct choice for your trailer. As I'm editing this video, I realized I forgot to tell you about the LT versus ST and what my opinion on that is. As you can see, we do have ST tires. And in my opinion, as long as you have the correct ST tire and you are following the hieroglyphics and doing as they said, not overloading it and not going too fast, ST tires are a good way to go. If you want to go with uh, truck tires, you can, the LT tires, but they're usually way more expensive. And in my opinion, if you're following the guidelines, it's not necessarily worth the extra cost. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. And until next time, guys, remember, stay positive. Get out there. Life is an adventure. So make some memories.